In this video, we will apprehend the primary stakeholder group. As mentioned before, the primary stakeholders are the stakeholders that have been in the industry since the very beginning. We will go through more in depth the primary stakeholder group and their roles in the industry. It can be argued what stakeholders are the primary ones, but in our case, we identify four primary ones. These stakeholders are the game developers, tournament organizers, professional teams, and professional players. We will go through each in this order. Even though audience plays a crucial role in the industry, it is usually not counted as a stakeholder. Importance of the audience should not, however, be forgotten. We will start with the game developers, as they are a crucial stakeholder in a sense that without game developers, there wouldn't be any games nor any esports titles to play. Esports value chain or the audience's esports experience builds around a dedicated video game with esports title potential. At the beginning, the game developers did not understand the impact of competitive gaming and the industry developed regardless of game de developers' actions. Slowly, the game developers started to realize that updating the game and bringing more content to the game actually increased the lifespan of the game. Using games as esports titles was only a small part of the strategy and the full potential was not cared of or the impact was not realized in the beginning. When the competitive landscape started to emerge, the game developers didn't understand what was happening. For example, in the cases in StarCraft and South Korea, a whole new industry was created around it and it was not Blizzard who benefited from this the most. Rather, it was the other organizations who gained um, the benefits thanks to a very committed audience. This is part of the history, and nowadays the game developers are well aware of what esports is, and the whole titles are made only for competitive online gameplay. It can be said that the game developers understand their value role, <clears throat> uh, understand their roles in the value network. As a remark, we can say that the majority of esports games are created by a small group of game developers, such as Valve, Tencent, and the Activision Blizzard. Second group is the tournament organizers. Tournament organizers connect the game developers with the audience and furthermore work on improving the interconnection between these two stakeholders and are thus vital for the esports ecosystem. Professional teams are also more interested in the ecosystem where there are reliable and professional tournament organizers. Tournament organizers still have a fair amount of power, even though the game developers have started creating their own tournaments from within their, their organizations. Especially in the history of esports, the importance of tournament organizers is undeniable, as game developers weren't aware of the popularity of their games and didn't organize tournaments by themselves. Without dedicated section within the game developer company, the game developers must focus on their games rather than organizing tournaments. So healthy and competitive ecosystem is the best for a tournament organizer. Moreover, tournament organizers are needed in hosting tournaments in areas that are neglected by the game developers. Naturally, there needs to be a demand for the tournament in this case. Some game developers have learned from the tournament organizers before jumping into, their, into creating their own tournaments. And one example case with this is um, Riot Games and ESL Corporation. Third group is the professional teams. <clears throat> professional teams are necessary for creating a sustainable environment for competitions at the highest level. These professional teams are the ones with the fans, like in traditional sports. Professional teams create safety and support around the professional players. The support includes training possibilities, coaches, competitive environment, and salary. All this is to ensure they can focus on getting better at the games and beating the competition. Players in teams can also get income from prize money and other sponsorship deals. The biggest esports teams nowadays can even compete with some of the biggest traditional sports teams uh, in terms of value. 
Other perks for players can include certain premiums, like health insurance and even pension funds. Professional teams aim to keep their players in good shape and care for their future. Contracts are also aimed to be long-term. Many companies want the players to have a healthy diet and offer psychologist services to keep the players in the playing roster for as long as possible. Monetizing players and finding and landing sponsorship deals to keep the business profitable is important for professional teams. It's important for the professional teams to be able to keep their best players as well as constantly identify and train new talents. Lastly, perhaps the most important stakeholder group is the professional players. There is a sufficient amount of players in the market as many amateurs want to become professionals and make money while gaming at the same time. It is perhaps even more challenging to break through in esports than in other traditional sports, as it can be argued that it is harder to become a professional player making salary and winning prize money to support living than in traditional sports. Players usually need to commit to a specific game, and playing competitively is possible at younger age. Games, however, don't have planned longevity. There is a sharp focus for players to earn as much money as possible in a short period of time, and it is rewarding to be highly opportunistic. Teams can also be opportunistic as there's a lot to choose from. All this has led to a highly competitive environment where only the stars shine and have enough power in their so-called personal brand to negotiate. Getting pumped! 